Hello, Cinephiles, and welcome to Silver Screen Sips, a podcast where two idiots talk about movies. And today we're discussing the 2016 movie, The Purge, election year. Get ready to get political. Just a reminder, there are spoilers ahead from movies and TV shows that you might not have seen yet. So just know that you've been warned. If you haven't heard already, I've had a Red Bull, so I am afraid. I'm just waiting for it to kick in, really. I'll just take off, start flying. Get to sue Red Bull when you don't. (laughs) Yeah. All righty. Let's jump right on into our first segment. Isaiah, do you want to do the intro this time? This week in Hollywood. Beautiful. Well done. Thank you. All right. We're going to start off with the first headline. The Golden Globes have officially announced that they will air live on CBS, stream on Paramount Plus, and be available on the CBS app as part of a new deal between the network and the Golden Globes. Uh, Originally, the Globes and NBC were together, but they just recently ended a long-term relationship after the 2023 telecast following years of controversy over the conduct of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, which is the organization behind the Globes. Rip. Yeah. So the event will be airing January 7th of next year, if anyone is interested in watching it. I don't think I've ever really watched the Golden Globes. I kind of just will watch highlights afterwards. Yeah. It's television but, shows, so I'm not really... They do really movies, too, but they have weird, like, categories, like best comedy and or musical. Yeah, it's like, what? how do those... What? How do those go together? And then there was one year that, like, a movie, a movie won, and it was, like, not a comedy or a musical. There was, like, a few jokes in it, and that's how they got away with calling it a comedy. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? Bullshit. Controversy. <laughs> Speaking of controversial, Bob Iger. Oh boy. Bob Iger revealed that they're currently working on the fourth Frozen film at the studio. Oh my God. The fourth, and I know what you're thinking, there isn't even a third one yet. Well, because they're working on that one too. Stating Frozen 3 is in the works and there might be even a Frozen 4 in the works too, which we all know. That means, yes, they're working on a, another one. Franchise. And franchising it, especially given that Disney CEO said. On Thursday on Good Morning America, he made this announcement from Disney's theme park in Hong Kong, where he's in town for the opening ceremony of World of Frozen. So, yeah, they're definitely franchising it. Can they not? Like, oh, okay. I was 13 when Frozen 1 came out, which is insane to think of. That was 10 years ago. That's crazy. I watched Frozen 2 as a grown adult. I think it came out, what, 2017, 2018? Or maybe not full grown. I was a baby adult. What, Frozen 2? Yeah. You were 19. I was 19. Damn. Okay. 2019. <laughs> I was even older. Okay. Even... Frozen 2 sucked. I'm it sorry. Hot take. God awful. There is Some people no liked plot. it. It was trash. I don't. What do you call it? They were. It was a plot. They barely a plot of loosely connected musical scenes. That was it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just leave it be. Just leave it be. Like. Disney. Stop with the fucking sequels. Except Inside Out 2. You can leave that one. That one at least makes sense. But that one Pixar. I'm like, I can get behind. Yeah, Pixar, I'm going to leave them alone. They're chill. They're good with sequels. P- Pixar, uh, well, we don't talk about Cars 2. <laughs> I'm thinking like Toy Story. Even Finding Dory wasn't terrible. Like that one was cute. I didn't watch that one. All I know oh. is that Cars 3 is a banger. It should not hit as hard as Life it does. Life is a highway. <clears throat> oh. oh, I thought you would join. No, that's Cars 1 vibes. We're talking about Cars 3. Sorry. Anyways, so let's move on. Speaking controversial. So Taika Waititi's new sports movie, Next Goal, has earned the director his lowest Rotten Tomato score ever with a whopping low score of only 41%. The sports drama is based on a 2014 documentary which stars Michael Fassbender as a soccer coach trying to save the failing American Samoa national team. Sounds boring as fuck. The only lower score... (laughs) Sorry, I'm not a sports movie fan. The only lower score that OTT movie has ever received was 25% for Green Lantern. Shocker. He was only an actor in the film, not a director. But that's like... If you're looking at his IMDb, IMDb, that would be his lowest. Just because he was part of it. But directing-wise... Next goal is his worst. Yet. Yikes. I am very surprised Love and Thunder is not his worst. <laughs> you know, you make a good point. I don't know how Honestly, Love I hadn't heard of this it. one, so that's probably why it's doing worse. Love and Thunder has a 63%. <laughs> Damn. 
it's it's low, and I think it needs to be lower. <laughs> but yeah. hey, whatever. Marvel fans are gonna marvel. You know? How low can you go? Especially since they're thinking the marbles is so great. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking on you. Yes, do it. If you think the Marvels is a good movie, then you think Frozen 2 is a good movie. I'm sorry. Oof. You fucking tell them. Honestly, anyway. valid. <laughs> valid. Speaking of Marvel, mm. they have reacquired the rights to Fantastic Four when Disney bought out 20th Century Fox because now right. they own everything. <laughs> yep. However, they have now reacquired the first family, which is the Fantastic Four, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, they have been on the lookout ever since for their new Mr. Fantastic. And it's not John Krasinski. Sorry. Great choice. That already happened. Yeah, that already happened. Great choice. I would have definitely mm-hmm. been down for that, but that's not happening. However, they might have found it in Pedro Pascal. <sighs> he's, been looking just... at a, he's being looked at as a possible contender for Marvel's first family. Here's, here's the thing. I don't think he's a good fit. He's... he's... Daddy Richard. I think. I just think. (laughs) Reed Richards. Sorry. Daddy Reed Richards. Yeah. No, I just think, like, I feel like they're only picking him because he is so popular right now. And Disney's panicking. Disney needs a W. (laughs) They've been. It's like, no, pick someone that actually fits the role. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think he's. Just doesn't. No. He works as Mandalorian, he works as. Joel for The Last of Us. Those are the kind of roles I think he's like really good at. But he's he's also really good at like comedy. But I just do not see him as Reed Richards. I'm sorry. But I would love to see some test footage. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not going to work. I just I don't think it's going to work. Prove us wrong. Yeah, prove me prove us prove wrong, Disney. Yeah, do it. Do it. Daddy Reed do Richards. Do it, bitch. But you won't. Make make Reed Richards a thirst trap. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> uh, let's move on. So the Hunger Games prequel, uh, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, has reached the box office. And it had a 44 million opening weekend, which I think succeeded Marvel's opening weekend, which is hilarious. Right. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, meanwhile, though, the Marvels has seen a rapid decline in ticket sales since its premiere. Shocker. It fell 78% in its second weekend. Damn. Uh, it only earned an estimated $10.2 million, which obviously right now it's as of recording, it's Sunday. So Monday they'll have tomorrow. They'll have a better idea of the actual earning it got. But right now it's an estimated 10.2 million, which is Yikes. awful. Yeah, that is like the anyways, it's ranked as Marvel's worst second weekend drop off ever, as well as the worst for any Hollywood superhero movie in modern history. <laughs> great job, Marvel. Keep it up. You guys are doing great now. You thought you had your fill in Marvel? Well, here's some more. I'm going to start to shove it down your throat. The new <laughs> Madam Web movie trailer just dropped, starring Dakota mm. Johnson as the titular Madam Web, uh, where she it has to help several other spider heroes. I believe Spider Woman, Spider Girl. Uh, they didn't really say. Yeah. From an evil version of Spider Man. Now, the movie releases in 2024 with no definitive date as of yet. However, if you do check out the trailer online, it, it looks bad. It's a great fan-made film. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. Yeah. We will also be posting the trailer on our Discord if anyone's interested in watching it. Actually, I think it's already there. It is already there, and I also attached to it some banger co- comments, and I think that are hilarious. Yes. And I'm going to quote a few for you because, you know, we're all going to get a good laugh. Early one of the movies of all time. <laughs> oh, those are my favorite. It's going to be the movie of all time. Yes. I uh, can't wait to watch this with my wife and her boyfriend. <laughs> 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 Loved when Madam we- Weeb, <laughs> Madam Weeb said, my webs are tinkling. Truly oh one of God. the movie moments of all time. <laughs> yeah. And it's nice to see that fan films are getting such a big platform. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you, if you, if anyone's already seen the, the trailer or if you haven't, go watch it. It just does not. It just feels so weird. To, like it looks fake. I don't know what it, it is. is about it. It could be the shitty, like, like the first two seconds of the trailer where it's like cracked glass and web or something like that kind of transition. That looks like a fucking 
filter on Snapchat. <laughs> like it just looks so shitty. It was like 480p, but like over like 1080 footage it, or 2K footage or some shit. The rest of the, like the dialogue just sounds like it was written by AI. It's so so the bad. So like we have what do you call it? It's like we have to defeat the bad guys. Like really? Is that oh that's and the like plot. none of them had any fluctuation in their tone. It, they were all so monotoned. Which I mean, Dakota Johnson kind of speaks like that already. But like every character, but like, like a, every character, <laughs> yeah. It like was Cindy like Queenie's in this movie. And he's and what do you call it? She's got range, and she's just like, yeah, dude. She was lacking in this one. I was like, what the fuck did they do to her? But yeah, that concludes this week in Hollywood. Uh, you can check all of our news sources cited in our Discord channel, or you can also see the trailers that we're talking about all the time, and we'll be dropping a few new ones in there every so often. Yes, yes. Couldn't have said it better myself. Oh, man. What a shit post that was. <laughs> now, uh, I need a drink. I don't know about you. I always need a drink. I know. Let's move on to Big Lou's Big Brews, brought to you by Big Lou himself. Um, he, actually, no, he's not here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mislead you guys. Fuck. We got two episodes. Wait, wait sorry. <laughs> We've got... We got two drinks for you guys today. So nice. Here it is. The first drink we have is called the right Manhattan, meaning right, like right wing. Ah. Uh, all right. So <laughs> this is from Omni Hotels and Resorts. It was a post back in 2016. So about the same time that this movie came out. There's a quote from the website that says, take your pick and enjoy your libation. Love it. Then sit back and see if you can predict the election. Oh, <laughs> what a time that was. At Omni Hotels and Resorts, we want to see if the consumption habits of our guests can predict the outcome of this year's presidential race by polling for cocktails. Wow. That's, um, what a statement. Yeah, so there were actually seven cocktails featured in the article that we're quoting from here that obviously you guys are more than welcome to go check out. If you'd like, you can find the sources on our discord. Um, so there's three for the Republican candidates. And then there was three for the democratic candidates. And then one for the actual president of the United States, like seat based on the election in 2016. So for obvious reasons, these cocktails relate to the one to one of the thematic battles between politicians that was central to this film oh man what a sentence Alrighty. <laughs> so the right manhattan is a refreshing mix of makers 46 apricot preserves and lemon juice muddled with mint and topped with club soda the perfect cocktail for this manhattan mogul 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 that's mogul. the word okay here are your ingredients so you're going to add two ounces of your makers 46 bourbon you're going to add one bar spoon of apricot preserves or apricot. Don't hate me. <laughs> one lemon wedge squeezed, six fresh mint leaves, club soda, orange bitters, which is optional, and garnish with a mint sprig. So the way to make it is you add the six mint leaves to a mixing glass and muddle gently. Then you're going to add the bourbon, bourbon, the lemon juice, and the preserves with ice to the glass. Cap and shake briefly. And then pour the contents into a glass, add crushed ice on top with club soda and gently stir and enjoy. Interesting. It seems like a very minty drink. Yeah, it's kind of like a, ref sounds refreshing. Sounds refreshing. I, uh, I like refreshing. Four out of five. <laughs> yeah, I would give this a five out of five. Five out of five? I love bourbon, obviously. Yeah. Um, the apricot and the lemon and the mint just sounds very refreshing. As well as obviously, if you wanted to add the orange bitters at the end, you could do that too. I don't know if I would do that. I think it might be good without it. I don't know. Sounds really good. Yeah, it does sound good. All now, right. um, that was, by the way, that was just one of the six or one of the seven drinks that were in that article. So you can read the other ones, but this is just one of them. I guess this is the one that Lewis probably thought sounded best. So he probably threw that one in. Now on to our second drink, which is perhaps the best named one, the Trump teeny. Trump -teeny. Gotta love it. 2016, man. The Trump teeny. So the Trump teeny is just like the presidential candidate it represents. Crafted with Tito's handmade vodka. It's sweet from a sugared rim 
tart from the lemon and cranberry juices, and has a sparkling finish from the Domaine Chandon Brut. So here are the ingredients. We have one and a half ounces of Tito's, 0.75 ounces of lemon juice, 0.75 ounces of simple syrup, one ounce of cranberry juice, and a splash of Domaine Chandon Brut. I, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. And then you're going to garnish with a sugar rim. So you combine, combine all the ingredients, except the obviously the sparkling wine, which is the Domaine oh. Chandon Brut. Um, so you're going to mix everything else in a cocktail shaker with ice and shake vigorously. And then you're going to strain it into a sugar rimmed glass and top it with the sparkling wine. And enjoy. Intriguing. Intriguing. This sounds one, like one more up your alley. It sounds sweeter. Yes. Also, basically a vodka crayon. Yes. With a splash of champagne. Yes, and like lemon juice. I will give this one also a four to five because I like vodka. I like it's it's I like simple syrup. Like it gives it like a nice little sugary taste. So this mm-hmm. is definitely more up my alley. Okay, I think I would give it a four out of five as well. It's more sweet, which is uh, not really my thing. But I love drinks that you drink you don't realize you're getting drunk until you stand up. <laughs> See, those drinks are good, but they're and also the drinks that make you puke. So I tend to <laughs> I avoid like to those. Live life on the edge. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would order it if I was out and about. Like, it's definitely like an out going out drink. But like, if I had to choose between the two to drink at home, it definitely would be the first one. But yeah, four to five. Sounds pretty good. For all you vodka cran lovers, this is right up your alley. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lewis, for two drinks. What a special episode. The ones we actually liked. Yeah, I mean, both of them were pretty fucking good. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor of today's episode, Shaker and Spoon. It's a monthly subscription service that gives you bar quality recipes and greens designed by award winning missiologists. Their latest box, Rum for the Holidays. <laughs> Whoever is making these puns, keep going. I love them. They're genius. Yes. Very features, good. You guessed it. Amazing rum cocktails. Recipes to get you into the holiday spirit. If you like your very own box, drink along with us, then head on over to shakerandspoon.com and use promo code SIPS10 to get $10 off your first subscription. Again, that's promo code SIPS10. $10 off. I'm just glad we don't have to keep saying bourbon. That was a, that was a top tier pun. <laughs> okay. You, yes. don't, you don't make fun of the top tier puns. I would love for that to be my job title at somewhere. It's just like pun guy. Pun maker. Yeah. Hello, I'm the pun maker. I work for the marketing team. <laughs> now, Isaiah, before we started recording, you said that you had a question for my question of the day, which is perfect because I've got nothing. So. Yes. What do you, I'm curious what you want to ask for best question of the day. Please give me your answer to the following question. Okay. How many people would you... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 72. 72. No. Um, the beginning of this movie, uh, some perjurer killing off Senator Roan's family, but he does it in a very specific way where he mm-hmm. mentions that he has a purge playlist. Oh, that's a great question. Oh, I, I mean, I'm assuming what you're. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so my question is, what would be on your purge playlist? And obviously it could be you can na- uh, answer any kind of way because the purge playlist would probably be like 12 hours long. <laughs> But right. you could probably answer it in a way of like what your ending song would be, what your starting song would be, what a song would be in the middle, or a song that you would specifically put in there for something you specifically were going to try to do on Purge Night. So Okay. All right. Any okay. Way you want to it. God. Oh, that's a good question. I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> See, it was such a like small moment in the movie that I kind of forgot that happened until you said it. And I was like, fuck, that's a good one. Okay, let's make it easy. Let's do first song of the night. Yep. Our song where like shit starts to happen. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, which would be like the the finale, like when when everything is done, like the end of the night. I don't know what I would be doing. I feel like we need to set like some sort of scenario. Well, last episode, you said you would rob a bank. So what? Song mm. would you play while you rob a bank? <laughs> I'm gonna start it with Paper Planes by MIA. <laughs> okay. That's a good, like, I'm about to fuck shit up kind of song, I feel like. Okay. Then that would be, yeah, that'd be like go into the bank, starting with that. Then I'd probably, ooh, Bonfire by Childish Gambino. 
Oh yeah. Okay. That, okay. that would definitely be my middle song. Like while I'm fucking doing shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That shit gets me hyped. I, I'd probably end it with something by labyrinth Mount Everest. That's one of, it's actually an older one that I kind of forgot about. And then I, I just typed in labyrinth on YouTube and that was one of the ones that popped. I was like, that's definitely got to be the last song of the night. Cause it's like, I think the lyrics are literally like Mount Everest ain't got shit on me because I'm on top of the world. That's like the first lyric in the song. And it's like, yeah, that that works. What are your what are your songs to start off the playlist? I think it would be The Purge. (laughs) (laughs) All right. This is The Purge by J Park, PH1, Big Naughty, Woody Go Child, Juan, Trade, L, Sick K and Groovy Room. All right. This is a uh, it is a Korean song but it is okay. mostly, it's mostly wrapped in English. So it'd probably start off there. In the middle, somewhere, will probably be Start a Riot by Duckworth and Shibuzi, which is uh, from the Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack. It would also probably include Gasoline by I Prevail. <laughs> and okay. to end it would probably be Club to Death, Kura Yamino Variation by Rob Dugan, which is from the Matrix soundtrack. I was going to say, every song you've mentioned, I have never heard of. <laughs> so I'm glad you're going to be sending me links to that. And so that other people who, because I don't know how many people know my songs either, can listen to it. Too bad we can't just insert like five seconds of the song without getting copyrighted. Yeah. Because I don't need to re-edit this entire episode because they didn't like <laughs> it. But yeah, no, that would do, those would be my songs. Yes. I would also probably have Bonfire in there too. <laughs> yeah, Bonfire is fucking good. So let me just I um I I realized like the three songs I suggested are just not usually my taste in I mean like I like those kind of songs but like I also don't listen to them every day. Like I tend to listen more to like alternative stuff. So the fact that those were the first three to pop into my head is really strange. <laughs> but they honestly really fit. Damn, Isaiah, that was a good question. Thank you. Thank you. I said I, the second it was like, it's literally like the third line in the movie. And I was like, Ooh, that's a great question. What would I have on that? Yeah. Let us know down below. What song would you kill someone to? I was, just not, <laughs> I was going with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Totally joking. <laughs> Disclaimer. These are all rhetorical and not true and uh, would never happen. Hypothetical. Hypothetical only. We do not. And it's only time. for our songs are for the scenario of robbing a bank. Just want to point that out. Yes. Robbing a bank. On Purge Night where it's legal. Yes. All hypothetical. hypothetically. Hypothetically. <laughs> do you not yes. endorse any crimes. Ever. Ever. Unless. I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> okay. Joking. Okay. Okay. All right, Isaiah. Yes. Uh, let's move on to your segment. Oh yeah, I to where I don't, longer. I'm not doing it. So no, unfortunately, because uh, I don't have the facts. So, what do you got? She's factless, guys. Sorry. I know. I'm so sorry. All right, let's get into it. You have any? I do have. Actually, I have a few. Oh yay! Every single time I have, I find like more than three. I'm like, holy crap! How the hell did I find more than three? <laughs> Especially Beautiful. for the first movie, because there is l- literally nothing on these things. Yeah. Like, even their own wiki pages have nothing on them. Damn. So, yeah, that's crazy. So, here we go. Now, as you guys know, this movie is takes place in 2016 and is around the electoral election. And Universal, man, they really let this, they let them go as wild as they wanted to. Because they had made, for their advertising campaign, a lot of uh, purge TV spots that kind of mimicked, like, I voted um, political ads, stuff like that. Mm. except they changed it like oh i purge this is why i keep america great is one of the lines which was later coined by trump in his in (laughs) one of his elections um which was funny not to make america great again no not that one he literally took the term make up keep america great i think is like his newest one or whatever Mm. and that's literally from the purge like that's from their tv spot campaign um that's crazy however what was crazy is that they played one of the tv spots during the GOP debate. It's, That's amazing. And it featured actors playing Americans, giving reasons why they purge and stuff like that. They even had stickers that was the American flag instead of a pole. It was a knife and said, I purge instead of I voted. And <laughs> they played it during the GOP debate on CNN. 
and CNN's were po- uh, CNN viewers were polled afterwards saying that it felt way too real. Oh my god, I can imagine. Yeah, and, and if you've ever seen the marketing TV spot, campaign off the charts. Yeah, like what do you call it? At, however you feel about the movie, the marketing for this movie was god tier. That may, whoever was in charge <laughs> of that was just got a blank check, and he said, "I got ideas." Now the little weapon that Frank Grillo goes around punching people in the neck with, which is... Oh, yeah, the fucking ninja knife thing. The little ninja, yeah, it's called an urban pal. Mm. Now, the senator's house that she decides to hole up in for the purge at the beginning of the movie is actually the same house that the Underwoods live in in House of Cards. Interesting. Never seen the show. But it's a pretty, pretty good show. It's freaking crazy. Now, next, DeMonico, the writer and director of these movies actually has a fear of guns that showed up he has a fear of guns this stems from the multiple mass shootings and gun violence crimes he sees on the news all the time and it kind of terrifies him and his daughter or like that his daughter lives in a world like that that she can just Mm. you know be killed any moment and has come to realization that the usual villains that we would usually see in movies and such have become far less scarier than a random man that you would see on the street because it really nowadays kind of just shows that everybody is kind of capable of anything Mm -hmm. and that's kind of one of the things that he wanted to showcase in the movie is that like really anybody's capable of doing crazy things if like if they had no repercussions to it yeah and that's kind of what's also stemmed from his um, is that why those fucking annoying ass teenage girls were like crazy in the movie uh no i think it more meant just in general (laughs) of just the the overall theme that he was trying to go for gotcha because i would love to talk about them later yes Now, the plot was loosely inspired by the 2016 presidential race, obviously. No way. Really? I had no idea. (laughs) Uh, He was quoted stating, I'd like the audience to play with and see who they feel is representative of the actual candidates in the real world without me saying pretty fucking obvious who they're leaning towards. (laughs) It's like hmm, a white man or a white woman he hinted Hmm. i think the audience will have a lot of fun saying oh that reminds me of something donald would say yeah uh and for our last facts yeah it wasn't a lot but managed more than three Mm. it wasn't originally called election year and universal said hey we noticed some things that you're doing let's call it election year they say what it was originally gonna be called no i couldn't find anything it was originally called but this a movie was apparently supposed to be it was originally going to be the first purge, the first first purge, first purge movie, mm. you know, uh-huh. about yes. the prequel <laughs> about the first purge. Frank Grillo said he would return. So they said, scrap that. We're going to start a new movie that continues so that they can get Frank Grillo back. So I don't think they really had a original name for it. It was probably just whatever their uh, their holding place title was for the movie. And then they were like, what are we going to name it? You know, this is really going down and it's getting real political. Let's call it election year. <laughs> <laughs> That is all our facts for today. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get into it. Yeah, I think my I think my letterboxed review is literally just like the most political movie that ever politicked or something like that. Yes, that is what it is. Or politicked. I don't know. That's not a word, but I made it a word. Um, so with that being said, mm-hmm. let's hop right into it. Uh, bear with us. <laughs> This is going to get crazy. Here's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they had Frank Grillo back at it again. So I I really I really felt like, oh, wait. Oh, my God. We're really bad at this. Should we explain what happens in this movie? I'll I'll sum it for you. Yeah. It's the purge again. (laughs) Except this time it's during election year and Senator Roan is up for candidacy to end the purge. And she's up against this other guy named the minister who doesn't want to end the purge. And they decide for some reason to let government officials get killed because the plot dictates it. So Mm -hmm. they Senator Roan has an assassination attempt and the movie is just her surviving the whole night, the whole night. And then there's also some side quests with another poor people trying to protect a deli. There you go. That's the plot. Good. Perfectly well put. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, Frank Grill is back at it. He's a security guard this time. We actually get to know his name. I already forgot it. I still Mr. say Leo him. Barnes. That's what it was. I still call him Sergeant. Um, and then Elizabeth Mitchell was playing as Miss Rowan. Um, she's from Lost because I recognized her face uh, and I loved her in Lost. So it's nice to see her face again. Mm-hmm. 
And then also a small little cam- not cameo, but a small role uh, was Raymond J. Barry. He was in The 100. He's an amazing actor. Just so to see him in something other than The 100, I was like, whoa, hey, dude. I definitely think they upped the ante this film with uh, how they like would kill people. Like they just got way more crazy with shit. Mm-hmm. Um, like the fucking guillotine scene or like even just like the Abe Lincoln Memorial, like that shot alone was like, whoa, like that was a pretty sick shot. Yeah, that was definitely a movie shot, though. Like, that's not something anyone would realistically do <laughs> ever. Right. I think, too, that they must have known, like the director and the producers and everything, they must have known that Frank Grillo was really their like their key savior to this franchise. And that's why they got him back, because he really had no reason to come back. There was quite a few things that I, I that bothered me with this film. Um, wow. Now that we've gotten through the pros, here are all my cons. Damn, that was fast. <laughs> yeah. So first off, I can we just I need we need to figure out how this works. How can people from other countries visit America and get to kill people if they're not citizens? Like, how does how does that work? Like, logistically speaking, there's no. Well, if no crime is legal, that, if you. OK, so if you go to another country, you're bound by their laws, right? Mm hmm. So if you go to a country and there's 12 hours of no law, I don't think the being a citizen applies anymore. It's just you just do whatever you want to do. Oh, I get that. I can get behind that. It's more so of like, okay, if the whole purpose is to control the poverty and the crime rates and everything, it's like if you're bringing in, you're bringing outside foreigners into it. Yeah. Then you're kind of bringing this like outlier into the situation. Like they could also like then those tourists could also die. And then you have another issue on your hands when the purge is over, because then you have other countries saying you're hurting our citizens and they're not even. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm getting at here? Okay, it's complicated. I think it's more complicated than they realized. Yes. However, I will counter with that. There are certain places that you have to sign. That if like, say, I want to go to the Middle East, right? I have to sign documents saying that if i get kidnapped or something the american government does not have to come after me mm. they don't have what do you call that i am going on my own free volition and if i die that is my own prerogative and that they gave me the warning saying that is possibility hmm. so i'm sure they're like hey their governments are like hey if you come over here and you die that's your own damn fault <laughs> ma'am i think that just wasn't established so it was kind of like without that knowledge or without assuming that you're kind of just like wait huh Murder tourism, maybe. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you noticed this, but especially during the oh, so the cinematography in this movie is very interesting to me yes. because for one second you'll have like the Abe Lincoln memorial shot, which is like I wouldn't say it's cinematic, but it's good enough. It's, it's passable. It's an eye catcher. <laughs> yes, but then you have like the scenes in the deli shop during the daytime where everything in the background is just blown the fuck out. I don't know if you noticed that, but like all the windows were just white. They were on the surface of the sun, not there. <laughs> Dude, it was awful. It was like, I looked like a student film. I was like, why is everything so washed out? Yeah, it looked really bad. And then there was other scenes too, but like that stood out to me like that, where it just looked like shit. And, but that was like the first one I noticed. So I wrote that one down. Um, Also, there was a lot of ADR, which if those who don't know what ADR is, it's basically when after you're done filming and everything, if you need to re-record a line or something in a scene, you'll bring the actor in to like a recording studio and have them voice over the scene and use that audio in the movie. So there's a lot of ADR in this movie that I noticed, and it's very jarring because it's blatant. (laughs) <laughs> yes, it's very obvious it's ADR because the person's not even fucking talking in the scene and they're saying something though and the, or like you can hear the change in audio quality like it just really was it really like took me out of it. I was like, dude, come on guys, get your shit together, please. Um I think of course <sighs> Okay. Okay. The crip whistle. The crip whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he made a, that man made such a like risk. He's like, you, you got a 50 50 chance. You better hope you're on the right side of that 50. 
dude, I was like, what the fuck is go-? like that? I sorry. That made me laugh so hard. He's like, that was a crip whistle. They're, they're whistling back now. I was like, what the fuck is going on? The um, yeah, there was a lot of ex machinas. That's one of them. And then I think also the girls. The girls? The teenage girls trying to kill a fucking man over a goddamn candy bar. Oh, that whole plot was so annoying. I hated every single one of them. And I know we're supposed to hate them, but like. Really rooted for when they got ran over by that truck. <laughs> oh, so, so satisfying. That whole plot was just kind of like, I don't know. They never once scared, like they were not intimidating at all. And they made them seem out to be these like intimidating people. And I was like, I cannot take this actress seriously in this role. Like she just looks like a child. <laughs> um, and she was just not really good at playing like crazy. So it just kind of came off a little cringy to me personally, especially like some of the like the lines she was delivering were just like, oh, stop, please. I want my candy bar. Yeah, I want my fucking candy bar, cocksucker. I was like, dude, <laughs> I was like, who the fuck says that? There was like a couple other, I guess, like plot holes that I was just like, really? Like, this just doesn't work like that. Like the guy with what was the little tiny ninja blade thing called oh the the urban pal (laughs) yeah okay you mean to tell me that that cuts through a bulletproof vest that's like two or three inches thick when the blade itself is maybe two inches thick and then also pierced his skin so actually i do have i did look into that because i was like what the hell like yeah so i was looking at i was on reddit (laughs) of all places Mm. and someone had mentioned that like what the hell is up with that and now I do agree, like that knife is definitely like the urban pal is not it's not big enough to go through a vest and to get stabbed in like that area for it to make like, any damage. That's not like a paper cut. I was like, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. However, I did find out that Kevlar sometimes like the version of whatever version of the body armor they might be wearing. It reacts mm-hmm. more of like um, plutonium fluid, you know, like it's soft if you touch it. But like if you try to punch it, it gets really, really hard. Hmm. So apparently sometimes a Kevlar are like that. Where like the the bullet has enough velocity where it'll actually the area it hits hardens up because that's how it's supposed to be. But like if you were to stab it, it wouldn't generate enough force for it to be it would just go right through it. Yeah. I'll take I guess I'll take that. That's at least somewhat of an answer to yeah. the insanity. Um and then my last kind of gripe with the film was like the sergeant whatever his name is, I forgot it again. Yo. Um Leo. 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 Leo checks the security cameras, right? Before shit goes down. He checks the security cameras to make sure everyone's in their post before the purge and everything. Obviously, he doesn't realize that it's been rewinded. So he's not looking at live footage anymore. But. okay, hear me out on this. Yeah, we've watched live streams on YouTube. You've Uh watched live streams on Twitch. You've seen things live in general. Okay. Usually there is some indicator that what you're currently watching is not live, like a time code or a bar at the bottom, like on YouTube where it's like, Oh, you mean shows. the time the time code that was in the top, right? The entire time. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, dude, how do you not see that and be like, wait a minute, this doesn't add up. We started recording. Like it said like one hour or something. And it's like, okay, you should know how long these cameras have been live for. It could be like, it's probably like three hours or something at this point. And now it's at like, He's supposed to be this like really high intelligent agent spy, whatever the fuck soldier guy who's like just good at everything. And he missed that, especially if he's already kind of suspicious of everyone. Right. Because he has this fucking hole in the ground that he built for an escape and also bombed the place like (laughs) he knew they he knew he knew that not to trust anyone. So why would he just assume that the cam like, Oh, that really bothered me. That was a big issue for me. <laughs> um, anyways, I gave it a two and a half. So that's not, I guess that bad of a rating. Mm-hmm. It was still, it was still an okay film. Um, I think I also gave the last film two and a half as well. So it's bordering a two. It's very, very barely a two and a half, but I'll give it to him. <laughs> now, what did you think? Now, Purge Election Year is by far 
my favorite of this franchise, which is saying something because this entire franchise has been real low. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it's not any in any way like amazing. It's entertaining. I'll give it that. Yeah. I came to be entertained and I was entertained. That's what I'll give it. It is not really a horror movie. It's more of like an action. Minus the like cheap jump scares. Yeah. I'll give it like a, it's a, it's a, a thriller action, which uh, I guess yeah. it's fine. I, I can dig thriller actions. I'm not whatever. The, um, and again, we're still in the concept of the purge. Now I'll give it that the purge franchise as it goes on, gives you more aspects of the, of like the world. So I think the world building is kind of okay because it's giving you different perspectives. So like the first one's like you have the rich side. The second movie is you have the poorer families out in about in the city. And then you have like now the political side of it, Mm -hmm. which and I do think that like the progression of things as they go through it is logical. It it makes sense. Like, oh, yeah, people are kind of getting pissed off now. They're like, you did this and now we're dying out here. What the hell? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I do think it's like a logical progression so i'll give it that and that's fair all the stuff that you said all those wrong things you wrote i also wrote i was like what the (laughs) hell that's hilarious yeah the crip whistle the girls the the lighting blown out yeah there is a moment in the deli where um the black guy dixon i think is his name he Mm. says calling the kettle brown but you can clearly see that he said black (laughs) originally That's amazing. See, the first one I noticed when, was when he was on the roof and Marcos comes up and he's like, so he, I forget the line he said, but it was something like, you know, got to go back home now, son, or something like that. And he, you could just tell his mouth did not say the word son. And it, he just said, you can go back home now or something like that. Yeah, it was it's like, just so bad. There was things changed that it really did not need to be changed. Like you could yeah. focus on a lot of other things before you got to that. <laughs> Or even the first scene, like obviously the guy's got a mask on, but like it sounded like a narration, like a voiceover with the guy killing Roan's family. Yeah. Now, the scene where they're all the all the NFFA people are sitting in the room watching the vertical television. <laughs> <laughs> I was so I looked at it and I was like, who the hell thought this was a grand idea? You know paintings can also be landscape, right? They don't have to be <laughs> vertical. Uh, there was a whole plot line there about how I think her name is Lacey or Lancey or something like that. The 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 black uh, girl, Lainey. Yeah, Lainey. Her thing about whole being the li- like little death. I was like, mm. it that was literally a setup. I'm like, oh my god, she's some badass. Yeah. Only to be set up for one line uh, later in the movie to be like, yeah, I'm little death's back. That's it. That's that's all. Well, she says, I'm back, bitches, or something, and it's like you killed one person, and then that's all you fucking did the rest of the movie. Yeah, so like, yeah, that felt never, really never unnecessary. Explain why she got this such legendary status. Like, no one ever. Yeah, knows why. I thought that was that she was like a character from like one of the orig- like the other purges, but I was like, I do not recognize her. Am I supposed to like know her? Yeah, like, nope, no, no, don't know who that is. Yeah, I will admit, I forgot to mention too that I thought the plot was plot twist was all right. Which plot twist? Which plot twist? That like they were going to go assassinate. The minister but then turns out oh. that he wanted to capture her and kill her how did they find her i don't know because they got Not rid of that it? stupid tracking bullet in in leo's shoulder and they're, even they're like how did they find us it's like i don't know you tell me <laughs> yeah the tr- first off tr- first off that sniper terrible guy in the unit should not give him a sniper rifle if he's in the unit because he missed yeah. every single shot except for one he fired 30 rounds and missed every single one of them yeah that was really stupid Especially when he had the advantage that they didn't know that he was even looking at him, you know? Yeah. And then also tracer bullets. Um, the whole going back and forth, like we call it the whole Kevlar thing, right? Like, oh, you know, there's a possibility because that's how Kevlar works. However, that's all going off the notion that we're going with like a realistic thing. But then you can't also, you, if you give him the benefit of doubt on that, you can't give him the benefit of doubt on tracer bullets <laughs> because mm-hmm. those don't work especially since the part that's glowing that has apparently the tracer part in it is the part is the that part explodes. that's yeah i thought you, i was gonna say i thought that's what i noticed and i was like i don't want to like sound wrong on that because like i i wouldn't call myself a gun expert but i've shot a i've shot guns before i know how they fucking work 
<laughs> I play Call of Duty. The, um, part, the, the blue part that's glowing is literally the part where the gunpowder is that explodes. Exactly. Is okay. The spark. Like you would have blown Thank up you. the tracer if you had fired the bullet. <laughs> so it doesn't yes. make any sense. Also, that bullet was huge. <laughs> yeah, that bullet was f- giant fucking enormous. How I don't have the fact that he was doing as well as he was with a bullet that large in his arm. Yeah. Or shoulder, actually, it's even worse than his shoulder. The fact that he even had mobility in that arm is a miracle. Yeah. They had, we all know that in, I guess, in movies, the, if you get shot in the arm, it doesn't matter. You're, you're fine. Yeah. As long as you're not shot in the chest and, or the head. Even sometimes the head. Like the, like, the girl got shot in the ear and she was just fine. She came back and she was like, I'm back, bitches. And you're like, wait, you just got shot in the fucking head, basically. And didn't, didn't, and didn't, didn't like react. Yeah. You're just like, oh, I, like, I understand like, oh, you know, hey, I don't want to kill somebody. But like, if you know, these people are going to come back with a vengeance. Yeah. And probably more people. That's what I would assume. And it's the purge. Like, I, sure, I don't maybe know want to murder people, but also, like, if I know they're going to come back and try to kill me, why would I not kill them immediately right now? <laughs> because... Yeah, or, like, if you can't do it, let Marcos do it, because he was ready to. Okay, anyway. The sniper blew up, right? We all, we all know that everybody in that room died from the explosion of the weird app, pipe, app, iPad bomb thing that <laughs> Leo had. You're telling me the guy survived and then became conscious halfway through the movie to tell them that he might have gotten a shot into the guy's shoulder. First off, how the hell did you even notice that? First off, you missed all your shots, so how the hell did you even think you got him? (laughs) But yeah, no, I give this movie a 2.5 out of 5 as well. Despite the fact that this movie has all these flaws, it was entertaining. Like, it was dumb, but Mm -hmm. it was, like, entertainingly dumb. And for, like, an action movie, it it gets the job done. That's Thanks, Michael Bay. Yeah, thanks, Michael Bay. Oh, I did want to mention that I did watch this with, uh, my friend was there as well. And she was watching from time to time because she wasn't really like there to watch it. She was more just hanging out. And there was it was the scene where the minister comes in and starts shooting up everyone. At the end of the movie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's just like slow mo bullets flying kind of scene. And I just looked over and I was like, you could tell Michael Bay produced this. And she was like, that makes so much fucking sense. <laughs> She's like, because she literally was like, no, wait, did he actually? I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, my God. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I was like, yeah, it's very obvious. Bayhem, baby. Bayhem. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, do you have anything else you want to add before no, we was, no, end today? It. It's a competent action. It's a movie. It's a movie. It is the movie of all time. Yes. As to, to quote the top comments of <laughs> yeah. Adam Webb, it's a movie and it had movie moments. <laughs> That's going to be the name for the title for today's episode. <laughs> It's a movie with movie moments. <laughs> no, just the movie of all time. <laughs> the movie of all time. Uh, well, thank you everyone for listening to today's episode. Be sure to follow us on Instagram so you can get any and all updates regarding the show. Uh, if, of course, if you'd like to send us some of your movie suggestions for our upcoming listeners episodes, then you can send those on in to silverscreensips at gmail.com. And we will see you all next week with our final installment of the Purge franchise with the forever purge which is 2021 i didn't know it was that recent of a film we will see you guys next week also happy holidays i just realized it's thanksgiving that this episode well it's right after thanksgiving so i hope everyone had a great thanksgiving isaiah does too <clears throat> yeah me too me too happy holidays <laughs> <Damn it>. <laughs> <laughs>